LA Zoo Photo Day image review. So this started, it's Peter's fault. Because <laughs> Peter bugged me for years to talk about the pictures. So we started about five years ago having this day where we all gather and talk about the pictures. So I want to first explain to you how we judge the pictures. So I don't do the judging. So the crew here at Paul's Photo are the judges. I manage the judging. So what is my job? Stack the pictures up by animal. So we judge by animal. So we open up all your envelopes. We pull them all out. The judges give a first look through the envelopes to see which ones are worthy to be considered. Right? And I'm not looking at anybody in particular now. Some of you send pictures that are out of focus, that are blurred because the shutter speed is set too low, that are printed on typing paper, that are all green or blue because they were printed at a drugstore or the market or wherever. Does that have any chance to win at all? No, especially when you look at the quality of the pictures that are gonna win. So I sent you all my tips for winning a photo contest, right? What are they? Follow the instructions, right? Follow the goals of the contest, right? So what is the goal of the LA Zoo photo contest? Showcase the animals. Showcase the animals and how cool it is to go to the zoo, right? So we want to show cool pictures of the animals at the zoo. So that's what your picture has to be. And it has to be in focus, sharp, properly exposed, properly composed. And what's the last component? Well, my thought, Aaron, was, I, 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 Roxanne, is you have to be lucky, <laughs> right? So if five of us are at the tigers and the tiger growls Rawr! while looking at you, you have the winning shot and Brian is almost winner and Scott is almost, almost winner and, and Nick is almost over winner and Shelby has a profile, <laughs> right? And is that the reality of life? And there's nothing you can do about that. So what we did today is I brought out the winning pictures. We have the winning pictures, the honorable mentions, and other pictures that I wanted to discuss to discuss why they didn't win. And a lot of you have written to me, Mark, I have exactly the same picture. Well, no. You have a picture of the same animal at the same time, but I'm sorry, you were in Shelby's spot when the lion roared, right? Or you didn't get the animal in focus or you shot with one shutter speed too slow, or you don't know how to work Photoshop or Lightroom to be able to get a good print. So that's the reality. So here, now the judges had a real hard time on the tiger, right? Because Roxanne's tiger is awesome and they love the dripping water because it's unique. There were a bunch of ones with the tiger playing with the pumpkin and stuff like that. A bunch of, I, I, a bunch of the tree with the tiger underneath it, right? So, I mean, somebody said, well, I have exactly the same picture, right? Is that exactly the same picture? No, it doesn't have the water, it's not as crisp, the background's not as nice, right? So, the judges really liked this one, except you needed to use a bigger lens. Don't crop it, because if you crop, what happens to the picture quality? Goes down. If you want these kinds of pictures, what kind of a lens do you need? A big lens. If you're doing animals, you need a 400, 500, or 600 millimeter lens. And, you know, if you can afford a prime 400, 500, or 600, is that best? Yes. If you can afford the Canon or the Nikon 200 to 400 zoom, is that second best? Yes. If you can afford the Canon or Nikon or Sony 100 to 400 lens, that's third best, right? And beyond there, it goes down, right? So the judges really like this one, needs to be bigger. This one, overcropped, 
and over Photoshopped. And look at the color. How, what's the color look like, Carol? Green. It's green, right? That's not the color of a tiger. And so one of the things that beginners in the computer learn, they learn the sharpening slider, ooh, and the color saturation slider, ooh. And you know what? They think that more is better, right? And that the problem with this, it's over sharpened and over color saturationed. And that's what made it be green because the orange of the tiger in the shade, shade is blue, and blue and yellow makes green. green. Is this helpful, everybody? Yeah. What does this one need? Closer. Closer, a bigger lens. And the other problem is, I mean, this you can't do anything about it. They're too hot. They're too bright. Your eye goes here and here, and you really can't see the tiger. And I know that that's the way it is at the zoo, but this is a photo contest, right? It's not about what was there. It's about what do the pictures look like. So they had a real hard time, right? So we can see why this one, right? So... This was a strong debate between the judges, right? And Mark's picture, I mean, so this is a 9 and this is an 8.7. You know, and that darn Romanian judge gave it a 2, right? <laughs> but anyhow, right? So you can see there, right? Questions? So the telephoto stations always have big competition. Big competition. Why? Because you're close with the big lenses. Everybody's going to get cool pictures, right? So now it takes the luck, right? Is the animal going to look at you? Is the animal going to do his thing, right? So there's a, right? What color was this bird in real life? He's this color, right? He's dark brown black, right? Just a bad. Oh, that's, is he that? Is he gray blue like that? Okay, all right, okay. So, winner, 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 honorable mention, honorable mention, right? So they real the judges really like the owl. I would like to have seen this one a little bit tighter. I think there's too much bottom on it, but the judges still like it. They love this picture, right? Of the crown crane. And that's a hard picture because that's up in the aviary. It's not on the bird walk. And more often than not, what do you have behind him? Screen and mixed light, modeled light, which makes it a tough picture, right? I love this one. Right? Yeah. So they loved Rachel's here, right? Nice feel to it. There were a bunch of these entered, but a lot of them had brighter background and they weren't crisply focused, right? So what shutter speed do I use for these pictures? 2,000. 2,000, right? Because and this is one of the things that people are not understanding right now is we have shutter speed inflation, right? When we learned shutter speeds in high school or college or beginning photography, we were taught 500 was for sports, right? But that was for film, which is equivalent to 12 megapixels. Are any of you shooting with a 12 megapixel camera? No. You will all, God willing, be soon soon suit soon shooting with 30 or 40 or 50 megapixels, right? Because we want you to upgrade your cameras. We're a camera store. <laughs> so, but as you up the megapixelage, what happens to the picture quality? Picture quality goes up, so you see more motion, right? And if you're still shooting action at a 500th of a second, 
it's going to blur. Even if you have image stabilization, because stabilization stops what? Stops you. It doesn't stop the animal, right? The animal's still moving. So my camera for the zoo for Africa is on manual exposure, two thousandth of a second shutter speed. I am changing the f-stop according to the depth of field. So I'm shooting Karen the gorilla, and Roxanne the gorilla is behind her. Do I want her in? Do I want to see her in the picture? Yes or no? no. Depends. Depends. If I don't want to see Roxanne the gorilla with Karen the gorilla, I open the lens to 2.8. If I do want to see Roxanne the gorilla, I close the lens to f8. Or if I'm shooting a close-up of the tiger and I want nose to eye in focus, f8. If I just want the eyes, 2.8, right? And then my ISO is on auto. Now, I see a lot of you writing down these set settings. These settings only work today on the top pro cameras. They're the only ones who offer you those settings, right? So the Canon 5D Mark IV, the Canon EOS R, the Nikon Z7, Z6, the Nikon D850, the, the Sony A9 offer manual with auto ISO? Yes. Okay, so the A9 and A7, those are the only cameras out there that offer this. Right? The lower cameras don't. Questions here? Everybody okay? So Karen, which of John's was yours? Was it the bird one or this one? Chimp. The chimp, okay. All right. Sorry, Jen, the judges wanted this one to win, but the print's bad. The print's too gray. It's too gray. It needs to have the zip of a good black and white, right? And that's, that's all in the computer. It's nothing about how you shot it. It's all in the computer and how you printed it, right? So you got to work on getting that richness up. So I'll have my black and white workshop in the springtime. It's a weekend workshop where we talk about photography. It's a Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, three-day workshop on how to go from this, which is pretty much either in, so, and forgive me if this is not how you do it, but this is what you get if you switch your camera to black and white mode, or in Photoshop or Lightroom, you switch from color to black and white, or monochrome or grayscale, right? Then that's, this is what you get. That's not how you get a good black and white. They love the backlight on this one. I mean, it's just great. Um, uh, this one they loved, but it's not close enough. This is distracting. This is distracting, and the color's not right here. Right? They love this action, but right there. And if you take this picture and crop it, will it win? Yes or no? No, no because it's not going to be clear enough. Right? Can I see a cropped picture across the room? Yes, you can see it because there's just not the clarity of it. Even on an 8x10 print gang, It was an honor. There was there was no winners. There was no lion winners. So, sorry. Yeah. And, and you can see there were, you know, seventeen great winning photographs.
They really love Joe's winner here. Very nicely done, nicely framed, nicely printed. It's just a beautiful image. Um, they really liked John's image on the left. Um, it didn't win because he was a little bit over, it's a little bit oversaturated. It's a little bit too pinky, right? But this one still would have won. I mean, it's just a great image. Um, Shelby, this is yours, right? No? Who's it? Uh, Roxanne. I always have a hard time with this one when I shoot it. Do I focus on the flower, on the pe on the feathers, or do I focus on the eye? Right, right. I know. And but, it, and if you go to f8 or f11 to get the feathers and the eye, then the crapola in the background comes in, right? So what do you do? I don't know. Right. <laughs> what would you do, Bev? Go for the eye. Yeah. And this one. What, 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 what is he going to say about this one? No, not at all. Saturation slider, right, to 11, right? So, yeah. I, what's that, Rob? Uh, so, I love the flamingo exhibit at the LA Zoo because it's always in the shade, which means that the image is soft contrast and I have some ability with the camera to capture it. But what do I have to do then? Process it. I, you know, you can't. You have to get over the notion that with a camera I'm capturing reality. There is no reality. You are abstracting, you are pulling out of life something that you want to then share with me your interpretation of. There is no reality because you're always abstracting. You're always taking out of life. So I love the shade because then in the computer, I can take away the blue, I can add some color back, I can add some contrast back, right? Uh, that's season. It's season of the year. So, and what they eat, right? But right now, it's kind of like their dormant season. So it's just like the pelicans, right? Our California brown pelicans, right now is breeding season. So they're in this, the males are in this beautiful plumage with white heads and yellow stripes on their face, and they're gorgeous. In the summertime, they're all brown, right? Yes. No, they feed them certain kind of shrimp to make them turn print. Yeah. yeah. So, so here, Charlie. Um, sorry, John, Bev, Bev. John beat you, right? He he got he had a better angle, right? Yeah, and that that's the only difference. No, you printed it on matte paper. So John printed on a luster paper, right? So in the matte paper, it's a softer image. So if you want a, if you if your image requires softness, put it on the matte paper. If you want vibrance and clarity and bright color, you put it on luster or pearl or you know some paper like that. So I mean that was the difference here. I mean to me this was very clear when you put them side by side. Yes, Nick. I very rarely use gloss anymore. I've never liked glossy prints. Um, I printed glossy in black and white in the dark room because that's what inst instructors liked. I just, it's too hard to look at. It's too hard to present. The, 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 the surface of the glossy paper is so precious. I mean, any little nick ruins it. And you have to look at it from the right angle, right? So here with luster, Lisa, do you have good color on that? Yeah. Carol, do you have good color on that? Yes. Right? That's why I like luster or semi-gloss or pearl or whatever your paper manufacturer calls it.
How's it look, Jerry? Good, thank you. I don't know why, Carol, your pronghorn got put in here with the giraffes. I guess it's got a long face, but that's okay. Um, yeah, you can just take that out. It's okay. So the judges really like this one, Lisa, because it's what? Different, Different right? Different. You know, it's not just a regular picture of a giraffe. And I love it that you took, did it, took a chance with it. The problem is you were shooting into the sun, and maybe your lens had a fingerprint on it or something, but it's a little bit of soft from the backlight, right? Got to make sure your lenses are clean, lens shade on, all that kind of stuff to make it as crisp as possible. So that's there. Um, judges really like this one, but what's the problem with this one? Background, right? So there... That's where shooting a 5.6 lens hurts you. It really kills you. It, yeah. So that's where you, you know, why do you spend $10,000 to buy a 402.8? It's that picture, right? You can really hold that. Um, they like this one. They wish the background would have been a little bit better, right? Notice there were no winners in the giraffe category, right? Just... You know, we can only have so many winners, and there were so many strong entries this year. Carol, they really loved your portrait, right? One of the judges asked me, I didn't know they had goats at the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> so what is he or she? Um, a he. Peninsula pronghorn. A peninsula pronghorn. Very good. Yes. It's a very nice picture. And I'm sure the parents of the Peninsula Pronghorn would be proud. <laughs> oh, I couldn't do that again, could I? I mean, so this was a big category because we had a telephoto station, because the chimps are really cool to photograph, right? The judges really liked Tony's picture because it looked like they were having a conversation with the chimp, right? Dude, why didn't you, right? And, you know, we anthropomorphize the animals, right? I mean, he's thinking about, if I just could have got another pine cone, <laughs> right? Um, they love, Nick, what you did here, right? and how, what a great image that is. And John's picture here, there was a bunch of, oh, this is the, I don't think so. Yes, it's mine. Oh, okay, all right. So they love what, the Karen, you did with that one. And these two, what's wrong with these guys? Color, right? And the background, right? Once again, shooting at f8, f11, 5.6, whatever, right? You can't isolate, right? Yeah. So the one on the right was it too saturated or, or the color balance? It's color balance, not too saturated. The color balance is off. It's blue, right? Right. So shot in the shade, auto white balance. The picture went blue, and then it was not corrected. It was just sent to CVS, printed, and sent in, right? So. A lot of this, I mean, we probably had 40 of this scene entered. And 
none of them won because none of them were all in focus, right? So there, what f-stop do you need there? 8, 11, 16, something like that, and nobody went there, right? So some people had the front guys in focus, some people had the back guy in focus, nobody had them all in focus, right? They really like what Joe did here, and this, I mean, this is great, right? So that's however, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that chimp, Joe was there, and the chimp did the cartwheels across the thing, and he had the motor drive running going bang, 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 and then cut, cut the pictures all apart and put them together in the computer, right? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine photos, right? of the chimp doing a cartwheel across the thing, right? So this one, Roxanne, they really like this one. You know, That was the best of the family that they liked. Um, I would go in and tone this down. Yeah, I was struggling with that. So do you, are you Photoshop or Lightroom? Photoshop. Photoshop. I only do Lightroom. Okay, do you do Nick software? You don't do Nick software yet. <laughs> Everybody understand that? How many Nick people do we have in the group? Yes. So with Nick software, it would, so it's 69 bucks from DxO Optics, sells it, plug into Photoshop. I go with Nick, I go bang, control point, take it down, turn brightness down, turn saturation down, copy it, go there, 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 and this picture is done, it'll take 12 seconds. Right, Tony? N-I-K. Yes, it does. So, and, it, and for 69 bucks, you can put it in everything you own. Yeah. So, um, the judges really like Sharon. They really loved your portrait of the bighorn, right? Um, they really liked Luis's. What's the problem with Lu this one? The picture is misweighted, right? So how would you fix this? I wouldn't crop it. No. Move. This should be the right side of the picture, and with the space over here would be fine. Does everybody understand that? So that the weight of the picture is correct. You don't need any of this. You know, so here, there, I would come in probably right there on that tree to refine that edge. That would be the right side of my picture, and then off. If you had a bigger lens, you could make it a vertical, but I really like the landscape on this, so he's, yell he's Woo! Into the picture, right? Thank you. And they really like this one, but like the chimps, right? That guy's in focus, out, out, right? Now, there are times when I want to put three animals in the picture, have one in focus and the other two out. But on a group like this, what do you have to do, right? Keep them all in. So Rob, they really liked what you did with the, um, the, the zebra butt, you know, because it's symmetrical. And this person did the same thing, but this is a format mismatch. So you have a landscape picture 
with a portrait composition, right? So if they would have just turned the camera over and made that picture, then these both probably would have been winners and gone right next to each other, right? So, and here, I mean, that's a cool picture of the zebra, but it's just not as strong as the one on the left, right? So sometimes we have debates about the winners. I mean, this year I think was really great because when you, put, when you see them like this, can everybody see how the winner really is just right there? These are pretty cool. I mean, Junko, they love your portrait of the, of the tortoise, right? Yeah, and I mean, everybody had the cockroaches from the macro station. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. A friend of mine raises them. Yeah, and I, is, is he ask, aren't you afraid if they get out? No, we have lizards in the house. They'll take care of them. <laughs> So, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, too yellow, too flat. Yikes on the sharpness and saturation. Too yellow, not cropped right, going out of the picture. There's your winner. Just right. Yeah. It's not hard when you see it this way, is it? Now, what's the hard part? You're sitting at home, right? And you have your four pictures. You never know when anybody else is going to enter, right? And that's always the wild card in any contest. But hopefully, when you guys start coming to class here and learning, you won't be making this mistake anymore, right? You can always get beat in poker by a better hand. And are you okay getting beat by a better hand? Yes. Do you not want to get beat when you make a mistake and don't see what the other guy had, right? So I'm okay losing to a better picture than mine. I don't want to th look at my picture that I've entered and say, God, I made a mistake, right? And that's what Creative Photo Academy is about, is helping you guys not make mistakes. Oh, my. Oh, so, oops. Sorry, I got them out of order a little bit. So we remember the, the roach from before, right? Yeah, both of these could have been, except they need to be a little tighter, right? And then use the out of focus part to work. Yeah. I really like the one on the right. Um, and that one would have been a winner, except you only get to win one time and mark one for a different picture, right? So that's my job in the judging, right? They're looking at the pictures. I'm keeping track of who gets, right? So Rob, you said, how come I don't get two certificates? Because you only get one certificate. Well, I said, I didn't ask for two certificates. Right. Right, exactly. But so you only get one. You get one certificate. You can win once. If you would have been a winner, but you already won, we give you an honorable mention. And then the seconds get the honorable mention. So that's how it works. Oh, you're welcome. 
And why do we do it that way? Do I want everyone to win? Yes! I want everybody who enters a good picture to win. I'm just going to put the last four up here. So Lisa, that's the best elephant picture I've seen from the zoo in a long time. So since they changed the elephant exhibit, it's really hard to photograph. It's really hard to photograph. So you got a great moment here. This is great. So yeah, and Rong Ching, usually a picture like this won't win. Why? Exactly. No, they don't want a sad monkey. Oh, they don't want a sad monkey in the zoo, right? Right, yeah. 30 years of hard labor, right? But the, the judges love the light and the feeling of the picture, right? You know, so compare that owl to the other ones we saw, right? It's tighter, but the light's wrong. The exposure's wrong. And... Um, Whoever did this one, Ed, right? It's a, yeah, I mean, it's a good try. I don't know what you're trying to say. Trying to put all the, everything you saw in one picture, right? Now, when you travel with me, when we're going to Africa in August, we go to one country, three parks. When you come on a trip with me, you want to go to six cities? No, we go to two. Why? You get better pictures. Simpler is always better. Less is more. Look at the pictures that won. Were the big pictures with 20 animals, did they win? No. The intimate pictures that tugged at your heartstrings, right? Right? That's what wins, right? Do less, right? Be more intimate. Be more personal with your pictures. Get the composition right. Get the exposure right. You know, I hate to say it, but it's time to upgrade. It's time to get your photography to the next level. What needs to be upgraded? Some of us need a better camera. Some of us need a better lens. Some of us need better technique. Some of us need better printing. Some of us need better computer skill. Some of us need a better eye, right? And thank God that I have, we've been built here the opportunity to give you all that at the Creative Photo Academy of Paul's Photo, right? To help you with that. So um, let me go turn off the video. Did anybody have any questions before? I have one more thing to do. Yes. Luminar. I, I have, so the people from Luminar are friends of mine, and they were the people who originally did Nick software before Google bought it, and I have tried to like Luminar. Luminar doesn't work like Nick. And so I'm not very smart at this photography thing. So that's why I still do Photoshop, right? Because I learned Photoshop 25 years ago. Lightroom is a completely different workflow and a different thought process, right? I know Photoshop, I know Nick, I can make it work. I spent a day with the Luminar people, and it would mean me stopping what I'm doing and then spending 30 days learning something new, right? I don't have the time for that. I'm sure Luminar is a great program, but it didn't work the way I was used to, right? That doesn't make it right or wrong, right? And you always ask me for my recommendation, my, my, and when you ask me for a personal recommendation, that is not a sales pitch. It's what? Right. It's, where are we going for lunch, Roxanne, right? I'm not going to send you to the restaurant where they give me 10 bucks every time they send somebody. I'm going to take, send you to the place that, if I was hungry, that's where I would go. Same thing, right? Any other questions? Yes. Teresa. Yes, I'm going to be shooting this damsel garden uh -huh. tonight. Uh huh. Oh, they, they have a night light thingamajig? Okay. And, and so my head is forming with setting. 
Okay. So, high ISO. Okay. So, you want to decide what you want your pictures to be. So, for. I'm take so, a macro. Why? That's a good question. Correct. Sure. There's no macro. So, if you go to the zoo lights, if you go to the Descanso Garden night thing, what is the cool picture there? The lit up stuff. Correct. And the people dancing. How many of you pre visualize the picture? Before you get in the car to drive there, right? Yes. yes. So when, I, when you say the night thing at Descanso Gardens or the zoo lights thing, I think of a wide angle lens, right? With the path, with people in shadow silhouette walking up the path with whatever light display is there, right? That's not a macro lens. So what are you gonna take a picture of? A light bulb, right? <laughs> And, and the, the flowers are not going to be lit because they're going to be 20 stops darker than the light bulb. So it's not going to work. Right. So wide angle to normal lens, right? Okay. So if I was going to Descanso Gardens tonight, I would take a 35 1.4 lens or a 35 1.8 lens, and I would go, and that's what I would use. Just that one lens. Probably. Yeah. I mean, or 24 to 70, something like that. Other questions? All right, let me turn off the video. So, oh, before we go, thank you guys very much for watching. All right, Merry Christmas to everybody.